Hello, thank you for checking out our video on portfolio construction. This video is going to be a little bit more geared towards people that are newer to backtesting or building a backtest portfolio. But with the recent events in early August 2024 of some high volatility days, including a VIX spike of over 50, there's a lot of chatter about people trying to find new tests or find ways to mitigate their risk. And so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at a bunch of these different back tests here, and we are going to try to put together a portfolio of varying kinds of back tests that are not highly correlated. And so what we're trying to avoid is a bunch of strategies that all lose the same way. So just a couple of weeks ago, we had a vol event that the likes of which hadn't been seen in several years. So this is just a chart of the SPX. This is a little bit longer term chart. Today is August 14th. And basically what happened is we had a, a little bit of a sell-off at the end of the week in the first week of August. So we were at almost 5,600 on Thursday, Thursday morning on August 1st. That's where the cursor is right here. And then what happened is Thursday had a, a spicy sell-off down to, uh, uh, you know, got down to, to almost 5,400. Friday gapped down. We opened up even lower. We opened up at 50, around 5370, 5380, and, you know, kind of held its ground. But then on Monday, just had a brutal opening. So the market went down from about the mid 5300s, and we almost got down to 5100 over the Friday to Monday. So just a lot of nervous people looking at their phones and checking futures charts on Sunday night. There's been a lot of discussion online. People were maybe short too many puts or too allocated to one certain strategy. And just from reading various message boards and Twitter and Facebook, there were a lot of people that were maybe short puts that were perhaps not leveraged properly, that had too high of an allocation to being short puts or other strategies and ended up having a really rough go. And what's interesting is less than two weeks later, just over a week later, we're back up almost uh, 300 points. Over 300 points, we almost are uh, within spitting distance of where we were just a couple weeks ago. So this kind of volatility event can really take a portfolio for a ride. So what we're going to try to do in this video is look at a couple different variations and maybe how combining different types of tests. A lot of people think when they ask on a Reddit board or whatever, if somebody says, do you do zero DT SPX? A common response is, oh, that's gambling. And it's assumed, it's inferred that you're just selling condors or you're selling premium or yellowing puts and calls. We're going to look at a couple different tests that are not just selling premium. There's a lot of ways that you can peel the apple. And that's what we're going to focus on. So if you have another event like this, hopefully you have a basket of back tests to draw from that are not all the same type, that they're not all just short puts, that you have other things, other arrows in your quiver that you can resource. So that's what we're going to focus on. Okay, let's talk for just a second about curve fitting. So curve fitting is the concept of taking a larger group, and in this context, a large group of back tests, and applying conditions so that it filters out possible trades, and the end result of it is that you trade less. Curve fitting does have some pros, but it has massive cons. The pros are that you can identify a certain type of market when you want to trade something. The con is you are shrinking your backtest numbers and you're making it more susceptible to conditions changing, the backtest not functioning as well in the future as it did in the past with a smaller N, a smaller number of backtests. So here's an example of entry conditions that you could put if you were really crazy. It's got a days of the week, it's got a VIX condition, a VIX nine day. This is way too many conditions. I've never seen anybody use this. A lot of people feel like two conditions is curve fitted. There's a lot of people that feel that way. Two conditions being a day of the week and a VIX environment. That might be too much for some people. So what we're going to endeavor to do in this video 
is we're going to endeavor to have fewer entry limitations. That's going to give us more back tests. That's going to give us a higher end. Now I will say this, there are people, and I am not one of them who are very, very good at identifying what type of market we are in, mostly through experience and data and a combination thereof and understand and take off back tests and put them on discretionarily. That is something different than we're talking about here. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is making a portfolio that has uncorrelated strategies and eliminating the curve fitting and making it less fitted. So you have fewer entry guide rails, fewer entry limitations. And the goal of that is that we get more back tests and we can have more confidence in the back tests because they're more rigorous. That's what we're striving for. Okay. With that being said, let's get down to some back tests. So the first back test we're going to look at, let's look at an ORB. And we will go ahead and run this. Let's do this. What are the changes we want to make to it? We want to make a couple changes. This is not very curve fit at all, really, right now. You're doing it two days of the week. So we could remove those. We could remove those two days of the week and just make it every day. That would make it less exclusive than it is now. And that will give us more data points. And then we can take it back. So let's take it back to start of 2020. And that'll give us uh, about almost five years. And so let's change this to daily. And the other thing we'll do, we're going to take off two hits at stop loss. That's going to punish it a little bit. Got five cents entry slippage. I think this looks pretty good. So we're going to run this bad boy and it's going to take just a quick second to run. And while it's running, I'll talk through what it is. So you're buying a call 45 Delta. You're selling a call 30 points past that. So you're buying a call debit spread. So there's various ways you can trade an ORB. This is a bullish ORB. And actually if any of this ORB discussion is interesting to you, what you could do is check out our free ORB course on Option Omega Academy. So academy.optionomega.com, check out the ORB course. And the test is done already. That was quick, five years. Basically, here's what we've got. So um, what are we looking for? Well, initially it was profitable every year, so that's good. And it's got a nice capture rate. It doesn't win most of the time. So there's a lot of people online. One of the things that bugs the heck out of me is I'll get on Reddit board or a Facebook group or a discord and people will argue how important win rate is. It's like, well, you don't have to argue about it. You can contextualize win rate and see how important it is. So in this case, we're losing most of the time, but we have the potential for some really big winners, right? So our winners can be big. And all of these numbers here are helpful but they're all just contextual, right? They're contextual in the scope that we're allocating 3% of our portfolio. So what we want to make sure is let's jump back to the very beginning in 2020. Okay. So it did, it did work in, um, in, in the beginning, there was enough, there's enough buying power to do it. And as you can see, the second day you traded it, you would have had a, uh, you know, four X winner here. Pretty nice. And you can see it traded Interestingly, it did pretty well during uh, some of the COVID days. You can see with all the volatility, we had just massive market moves moving, you know, a good number of points every day. So I think we could do, we have one wide bid ask spread right here. I'm not sure we're going to see a lot of those. We're probably not. There's another one. I don't see any others. I mean, we can go back through and look. I don't, I don't see a bunch. So we'll leave that alone. So I would posit that this is a great back test to start our building project. So we're going to call this, let's call this BABP orb. And we're going to save this and we're going to give it a tag. So we're going to call this BABP orb. Boom. And I will share this back test in the description. So again, this is, you saw exactly what I did. This is not optimized at all. I am sure you can find a better back test than this. I am very sure with a little bit of time and a few clicks, you can find a better back test, but we have 
back tests that we're not discriminating. We're putting on every day of the week, right? Whenever there's a range breakout between open and 1030, right? We're looking for the high and then between 11 and one, and you can change these numbers, but between 11 and one, you have a two hour window there. And if you're above that range, you would enter this, enter this trade. So at these metrics, 3% of the portfolio, we took our capital from 40 K to 270. We did have a spicy drawdown. Again, we covered, we went through COVID and we had a year when it barely treaded water here in 2021, but as of late, it's done pretty well. So I think this is a good one to start with. So this is build a back test portfolio test. Number one, the ORB let's, uh, let's put this in the list. Okay, let's look for another back test. I have one other uncorrelated one in mind. We did a video on a Rick. I will drop that YouTube link in the comments. And this is the Rick we did a video on. So what are we doing here? On Fridays, it fixes down. We are buying a condor. So people call these various things. I've seen them called short iron condors or long iron condors. I've seen them called both things, but in a typical iron condor where you're selling premium, you're selling a put credit spread, selling a call credit spread, you're doing the opposite in this. So you are buying a call debit spread and buying a put debit spread. So just to look at a recent one here. So in May, we were at 5245 when it opened, we bought the call there. We sold the higher call, it closed past the short calls, we had maximum value 30. There's no exits, no stop loss, no profit target. It is a ride or die. So let's take the same approach that we've been taking and let's make this more trades. Let's take it to daily. We're going to keep the VIX requirement. That's it. So is it curve fit? Mm. Has a VIX requirement. That's it. That's not super curve fit. And what you're looking for is a day when volatility has gone down, VIX is going to be at least a little bit cheaper. Hopefully your options are going to be at least a little bit cheaper, hopefully. And let's see how this does. Again, a lot of people have this concept out there that zero DTE equals short premium. Like that's the whole thing, which is insane. And if you spend any time in the OO community, you will find that there are some short premium folks, but there's a lot of folks doing a lot of different stuff. And oh yeah, this is worth looking at. So even with making it a more frequently traded and less curve fitted trade, it's still not terrible. Probably one thing we should do, we should probably, let's see how much these are. Should probably take this portfolio allocation down a little bit. And you can see it did have a rough, a rough go in uh, 2020 with COVID. Although I'm not sure how many times it traded because VIX probably wasn't down that much. And I just wanted to take a look originally and see how many contracts. So let's take this down to at 10%. It was doing fine. Let's take this down. We'll do the same thing we did in the other one. We'll do 3% on a 40K allocation and see how that looks. So again, these numbers, the MAR, CAGR, those are all going to change depending on how you set up your margin and your allocation in the backtest and as you'll see later in the backtest portfolio. So let's take a look at this and see if this is something we can use that's workable. So um, what you'll notice long periods of time, it does not trade. I wonder if we need a little more allocation than 3%. Cause this, this doesn't seem, I mean, at 3%, you double your money in four years with a smaller drawdown than COVID. So, I mean, I think a lot of people would have been okay with that, but let's, let's take this up. I want to try to trade it when we can. So let's take this up to 5% cause some of those high vol days in COVID and definitely in 2022 your risk reward on this might not be huge. It's a 30 wide. So the max value for it's 30 and it had some losers that were at least $18. And you can tell that I'm just doing the quick math, looking at the max loser. It also had some pretty cheap ones in there as well. There we go. That's more what I was looking for. Boom. 
So let's, let's, uh, let's roll with this. So yeah, I mean, a rough 2020, not as bad as the market. That was where your drawdown was. But you had, interestingly, you had basically the same drawdown the next year. And then the drawdowns have been a little more moderate. You're having a, a okay 2024, not as good as you did the past two years. We're going to save this one. We're going to call this the uh, BABP Rick. And we'll tag it and save that. So now we've got two back tests. And what we can do just to show you where this is going, let's just do it. We'll just do a quick one, but you can, this is the portfolio and we're going to run these back tests together. So year to date, starting with, we'll start with 40 K just like the back tests. So what this is going to do is you're going to run them together and you can see how the back test would have done. And these start dates and end dates were over. Wow. That was so quick for all those back tests, man, this is uh, it's not a bad year, not a bad year for, this is just two back tests again, but what are we not doing? We're not selling premium at all. These are two strategies where you're buying premium. So we're going to add to this, but here's our little start. We can, um, we're not, we don't need to save this, but just to give you an idea, there you go. Let's keep rolling. We're going to do this back test from scratch and we'll set it up year to date. Then we'll run it longer term. And this one's going to be inspired by an old YouTube video we did that was part of a cigar lounge. If you are unaware, the cigar lounges are on the Optional Mega Discord and they are free casual hangouts that we do. You should definitely check them out. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the percentage out of the money here. And we're going to start with selling a call that is 3%. And this is a variant on a test that somebody made a variant of that Troy originally posted. So this is several variations. And I found it when I was looking through some tests and tweaked it a little bit. So I kind of know what's going into this one. So we're going to do a 10 DTE. And what we're doing is we are going to do a butterfly, but it's going to be broken. It's going to be broken wing. So what's happening is you're going to sell a call spread that is 60 wide and you'll buy one that's only 50 wide. There is actually risk beyond the debit with this trade. If you blow by to the upside, you have a credit spread that could go against you. And we're going to do this every day. Let's do it after the news. Uh, I don't want to fit this. We'll just, we'll just do 10, 15. It should be fine. And we're just going to do, let's do, we'll start out with the 40 K at 5%. And what else do we want? We're going to tr try to leave it not fitted. I, I think we'd need, I do remember this is generally a bull market. So let's just do a very simple limiter here. We'll add an SMA at 20. So uh, this is the 20 day SMA and we're not going to take a profit target. We might want to stop loss here. Let's put some in commissions and fees and we'll think about if we want to stop loss or not. Let's just run. We're going to put in uh 15 cents entry. It's a 10 DTE. So that should get us started. Okay. Now we're getting there. And let's, let's just run this year to date and then we'll maybe play with it and tweak on it a little bit because we might, we might want to do some sort of upside limiter. Okay. That's pretty good. And we, we have a starting point here. We had, we've had some losers this year. I don't think any of the losers have been upside blow buys and we've had some big winners. So, so here's what we're doing. We're buying a lottery ticket to the upside and we're getting a discount on it essentially by selling premium to the upside as well. So if you look at this one right here, you're in the money at 5690, right? And the short call is 50 points away, but the long call is 60 points away. So if you got all the way up there, that could, that could be a rough, uh, a rough time for you. Now that didn't happen here. It has a, a decent capture rate. 
So now let's run this back. Let's do the same thing. We're going to run it back pre COVID. Let's see how it does. Again, we've got one limiter on there, which is a very basic limiter, but just a general kind of one way to decide if you're in a bull market. And that's it. That's all we're doing. Okay, while this is running, because it's running for almost five years, let's, uh, let's think through it. We've got an infinite amount of customization and we want to be strategic. If we are going to put a stop loss on here, which I think is maybe a good idea, because I think on the long term, we're going to see some kind of ugly losers. This is a more advanced setup and we want to understand it. Particularly, you could pay a debit and then you could have to pay a debit to close it. So that not ideal. That being said, this is nice that it's positive every year. Yeah. And see, you, you kind of got some ugly losers. You're only winning 25% of the time. Your winners are a good amount bigger than your losers, both the average and the max. Let's put a... Let's put an exit on here and we'll, we'll bump up the exit slippage uh, to 15 as well. Okay. Yeah. I think we're going to want to do an exit. Let's just do um, an underlying exit. So here's what we'll do. So we're going to exit when the short call is points. And here's what we can do. If we exit the short call at 60 points from the underlying, that's going to align it with our far long. So that's going to be when the long is violated. So that that's one way to do it. Let's check that. We'll check that right now. We're going to keep everything else the same so we can compare more easily. So we've got a 2.3 mar and our loser is night max losers, 19 hundo and a 27% win rate. So just for round numbers, we'll be able to see if this gets better or worse pretty easily. And we're going to keep it at using 5% of the portfolio. The other thing we can do to get a couple more trades, we'll have to think through this is we want to keep exact DTE on, but we could take off the exact strike offset. That's probably going to give us more trades. I don't love that. That did not work. So I guess let's, let's sort this by losers. When you're doing a refining process like this with the back tester, we have a bunch of different ways you can customize the trade log, sorting it. You can look at winners, losers, max loss. You can configure what columns show up in the trade log. It's really helpful. I don't know. Maybe we should just leave it alone. I mean, this is, a, this is not... It's not ideal, like with every trade, position size is so important. When the trade is losing big, you're going to lose your 10 wide, right? So it's going to be 10 plus your original debit. So, you know, that's not the max loser right there, but it's close. The 905, 905 plus the 10. Let's just, uh, I don't know. Maybe we can just use this one as, as is. Again, it's profitable every year. You just have to know... Your position side, you've got upside risk. So we could do some sort of stop loss. I kind of like the idea of it. I don't know if it'll work. We could use a delta exit. Let's just leave it as is and we'll rock with this. So we'll call this the, originally it was the old man and the fly. So we'll call the old man and the fly. And we will debit paid possible upside or definite upside risk. So we'll call this debit played cheap lotto, but also has upside risk. Make sure to take that into account and we'll add this to the portfolio. And uh, let's, let's just check on the portfolio after this. So we'll keep going. We'll find some more tests and see what we can see. Okay, this next back test, we're gonna approach a little bit differently. And I'll tell a quick story behind it. So this is a put ratio spread. It's a one, one, one. There are two short puts and one long put. And I actually did not come up with this back test. Somebody sent it to me. And I will be the first to admit that I'm not an expert on this type of trade. I know 
that many friends of OO do it. I don't see a lot in the OO community. Don't see it much in the OO Discord, but there are friends of ours that do run these. And it was kind of a little bit the inspiration for this video series because when we had the Black Monday Vol event in early August of 2024, I read some online discourse, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit of folks that were running these and maybe had a little bit too much size in them and had really bad days. So kind of served as the impetus for this class to show how you can maybe put together a portfolio that doesn't rely on one type of trade where you can have a variety of trades that have positive expectancy and are uncorrelated and are resilient. So let's look at this back test. What it basically is, is a put debit spread closer to the money and then you finance that put debit spread and indeed get a credit with selling a longer put. So again, I'm not claiming to be an expert on these trades. I know they come in a million varieties. People do all different sorts of widths on the debit spread. People do, sometimes they'll even do two of the naked puts. So there's a lot of variety. And so in this particular back test, which is all I'm going to speak to is the concept in this particular back test. What we had was, and just to review real quick, it, this one has a different capital structure because you are selling a naked put. So it does require more starting capital. Again, I'm not going to get into a discussion about using different vehicles. People do this on ES or MES or maybe even SPY that have different capital requirements. For the purposes of this video, we're just talking about the concept and showing it in the overall set of back tests. So what you had was you had a couple really good years since COVID where you had really positive expectancy. And again, I have this capped at one contract per trade and you actually are not trading it every week because you wouldn't have enough money. So if we juice the starting allocation more, it, it might even trade a little bit more. So we'll run that and we're just capping it at one of these. But it does bring up the concept of sequence risk. You're doing a long-term trade you're exposed to a rapid move down in the market, which again is what we happen, had in the span of about a week. We had a pretty significant sell-off in early August 2024. So if you woke up on that Monday morning and the market was down 2 or 3 or 4% pre-market or whatever, you might have had a bad day opening your brokerage statement and seeing all of these naked puts. So this will give us a little bit of an example. And because we're selling... 60 DTE, you can see basically what happened is for a couple of years, 2021, 2022, and 2023, you had good years, but then this one really bad loss would have taken your profits off for quite some time. And again, that would have happened. Here's COVID right here. It happened maybe in 2022. So there's a million ways to back test this concept. That's not what I'm trying to communicate. What I want to communicate is there are various ways to put together a backtest portfolio that don't rely on being overly sequence risked to one type of trade. And so hopefully this video series is going to help illuminate that for you and maybe show you some backtests that make sense in your situation. So again, with this situation, we had a couple of those 60 DTEs open. We had, uh, we only had two in this particular back test. Again, many different ways to do the back test, but you would have had a pretty significant loser. And even with a full credit expiring for months and months and months and even years, all the way back uh, over a year and a half, it would take you a little while to get out of that. Now, one thing about the trade, this one right here, you actually got a credit to put it on and got a credit to take it off, which is a great situation. So what must have happened is you got a credit to put it on and then probably last fall, yacht seed this put spread. So the put spread closed fully in the money. So you got a 50 wide put spread, which is great. And then the naked put closed outside the money. Again, there's a lot of ways you could mitigate the risk through position sizing. I've seen the concept of a one 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 where you keep your put debit spread and you turn this into a, a spread as well. So you have fixed risk if it all went in the money. 
Also, sometimes people group these into leg groups, which would be really easy to do in OO, where you leg group the debit spread and then leave the naked put. I've seen people diagonalize these. There's so much content and there's so many people who can explain these and do these better than I can. What I just wanted to show is just the concept that having a single type of trade can expose you to events that can can go poorly for you and then eliminate a long amount of gains. And yeah, it looks like what happened here, if we go back and look at the trade log, is this loss took out you know about a year's worth of work here, and it took out that one where you got the, yeah, here it is. Here's where you got the credit. So yeah, fall of 2022, actually, you got a credit. And again, last, last fall as well, same thing. You Yahtzeed the credit. So something to pay attention to and keep in mind. Okay, now we're going to do something exciting. Let's get to the application portion. We're going to go to portfolios here. And we're going to look at the videos that we've done for this back test. And we're going to look at these three. Now, a reminder, if you're watching this on YouTube, we have a longer version of this video on Optional Mega Academy that has additional back tests. It's totally free to sign up. And it's easy. You can find the information in Logbox. So we're going to take these allocations down by half. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to run it year to date. We'll close open trades and we're going to do something else. The portfolio has the ability to reset your starting funds every month. So this is people who trade options for income. And what that allows people to do, the feedback that we have is they feel comfortable putting on the back tests at size. And if they have a good month, they don't get nervous about continuing to put them on as it scales up during the month because you're resetting it every month. And wow. Just this is, you know, not a super long time period. So we've had long periods of kind of flatness to some growth. And then there's kind of a period here where you grew another one right here. And we're kind of in the midst of one now. And so this, I think a lot of people, you know, hopefully can get inspired to take these back tests. Here's the strategies we're doing. But just to review them, this orb here is every day. Okay. This Rick here, all you're doing is a move down on VIX. This old man in the fly, which has some credit risk, you just have an SMA. So these are very common trades. You're going to be putting them on a lot. They're, they're designed to not be overly curve fitted. And you, do you know what you don't see on any of them? No profit target. No profit target. No profit target. They've got one stop loss. These are what people affectionately have referred to as Zen trades. You just put them on. And now let's do this. Let's go back. We'll run it back before COVID. And so I didn't include the put ratio spread in here. And the Academy version is going to have a couple extra trades in it. But this is still going to give us three different types of trades. You know, the orb is an, is an upward focused debit trade. The Rick is both upward or downward focused. And the old man, the fly is upward focused as well. And these are debit trades, right? They're all debit trades with the exception of the old man, the fly, which is a debit trade with risk. So what we're not doing in this, we have no traditional iron condors, right? Like probably the most common trade for retail traders. So if you're watching this, you might have some iron condor back tests that you really like. Well, perfect. You can add those into this portfolio and see how correlated or not correlated that is. And something else to think about, these back tests are all from videos that we've put out or community contributed videos, you know? And so there's just a wealth of information in the Option Omega community. So if you're not a subscriber uh, viewing the full verified channels discord, I'd encourage you to check it out. And what we have here is we've got, you know, SPX versus our portfolio. And you can really see it diverge. And F SPX actually kind of falls off the graph here at the beginning in 2019. We can, we can run this out longer if you want. But what you have is you have a portfolio that's worked in a variety of market conditions, right? And again, these numbers on here, the MAR, 
the CAGR, the max drawdown, I've said this so many times, they're just a function of the allocation size and the weighting. So you can, you can play with this, but the capture rate of 22% is something that a lot of people would like to see. And what we've done is we've built a portfolio that is robust in several different market conditions. Hopefully this gets you inspired to create your own back tests. Nobody knows your situation like you know your situation. So hopefully this invites you to plug in, play in the optional mega sandbox, build a back test portfolio that makes sense for you. So again, check us out optionalmega.com. Subscribe, jump on the discord. Thank you.